Greetings, beloveds, and peace be with you. I'm Reverend Mitzi, and I'm so glad you're here. And thank you for answering the divine call to watch and welcome to Unity of Tempe online. Yes. If you're watching online, we affirm that you will be with us very, very soon. And if you're on vacation, happy vacation. So today is Memorial Day. Memorial, actually Memorial Weekend, because tomorrow is Memorial Day. And it is a US federal holiday to honor and mourn military personnel who died while, s while serving in the US Armed Forces. It often gets confused with Veterans Day, which is all about honoring all military. Originally, Memorial Day was known as Decoration Day, and it originated in the years following the Civil War and became an official federal holiday. Does anyone know when? 1971. So we're going to have a moment, to a moment of silence for all who gave the ultimate sacrifice to keep us in the U.S. safe. And so it is, yes. So now in addition, oh, I want to go back one, to one moment. Yes, there we go. Now in addition to honoring those who died in service to their country this Memorial Day, I invite us to affirm a vision of a world that so values people's lives as dwelling in God and God in them that violence towards anyone becomes unacceptable. So today is also Pentecost, and I was really hoping Glenda was going to be here, but I'm going to send this to her because she is our resident Bible scholar. But Pentecost happens 50 days after Easter, and so my message today is infused by spirit. In the New Testament, Pentecost, you may recall, is when the Holy Spirit infused the disciples with the ability to perform their own Jesus-like miracles and to confidently begin spreading his message. So just to refresh us, here is the Pentecost story as depicted in the book of Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamate. El let's just look at this. Because <laughs> there's a lot of hard language. I practiced it. But you can read it and pronounce it in your own head. Okay. <laughs> Both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs in our own language speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. Well, that's a lot there. It's a lot to unpack there. Pentecost, it's one of the greatest stories in scripture, and it's certainly one of the most powerful. It's kind of like a, a, a movie, a, the greatest superhero hero movie ever with 
SGI effects and divided tongues and fire and, and everyone speaking in their own language. Who wouldn't like the power of being able to speak in any language? Wouldn't that be super cool? So uh, it's an amazing story. Jesus told the disciples he would return at Pentecost, but they didn't know what to expect. And then boom, it hit them like a lightning bolt. <laughs> Imagine all of t Charles Fillmore's 12 powers being activated in you all at once with tremendous force. Like, <laughs> Imagine the power if they were in full activation with you all in your consciousness, going crazy, flooding your mind and your body with an overwhelming spiritual force of an enlightenment. It must have been truly electrifying for the disciples, not to mention perhaps scary. Now, whether you accept this story literally, metaphysically, or metaphorically, there's a lot to unpack and break down. And because we're unity, we are, of course, going to look at this story from a metaphysical perspective. So we're going to start with the gathering of the disciples. Acts 2, chap verse 1, tells us that they were all together in one place. And this coming together of like-minded individuals represents the unity of spiritual consciousness. They were in one mind of spiritual concentration, having put their whole mind and heart on spirit and thinking in harmony with divine mind. They have aligned their intentions to focus on the teachings of their master, Jesus. They've assembled for a purpose to come together, come together right now, in harmony as instructed. They weren't exactly sure what was going to unfold. They had no clue, but they were willing to be open to the situation and present. And isn't that kind of what we're all doing here? We're all together in one place. We don't know what's going to happen. What is River Mitzi going to teach us this week? Not uh, what I am going to teach you, but rather what is going to be awakened in your mind and your heart by being together this Sunday. Being open to spiritual illumination and celebrating our connection of oneness. We are here for ourselves, and we're here for each other. So now we're going to talk about the descent of the Holy Spirit. So this happens upon the disciples. And what does it represent? It represents the awakening of the divine presence within each individual. As mentioned earlier, Earlier, it's the activation of the indwelling spiritual power. Twelve powers. The activation of those powers are Christ consciousness, which is inherent in, is it inherent just in us here? Just us? Sit no, it's inherent in every human being, but it has to be awakened and activated. It's a time where we receive an influx of spiritual knowledge and insight to those of us who've been diligent in our spiritual practices, in our prayer, in our meditation, in listening, in being alert, and wish to receive ultimate spiritual gifts to those of us who are open to the possibility of divine expansion, not like I got it all. I heard it before. I've heard the 12 powers like seven years or 25 years, but there's always more to uncover, at least for me. Now we're moving on to the tongues of fire. <laughs> and thankfully, these are metaphorical tongues of fi fire rather than literally, because we all know what it's like to burn our mouths on a hot piece of pizza or a hot cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> it just hurts. It's almost like speaking in tongues because we just can't pronounce those words properly, right? <laughs> oh, 
But tongues of fire is a metaphorical representation of spiritual illumination and purification. It signifies the transformative power of the Holy Spirit burning away those limiting beliefs. Who's got some old limiting beliefs you want to have burned away? Of course, we all do. Fears. Any fears to be burned away? Negativities. Things that obstruct the full expression of our divinity. Just as a forest must burn down periodically to, to grow new undergrowth and new seedlings, not not, we're not talking about climate change. We're just talking about the, the occurrence that happens in forests. So we have to simultaneously, or not simultaneously, but we have to also be open to releasing those things that block us. Our old limited beliefs are burned away so that we may allow unfiltered truth to take seed and grow a new consciousness. Don't we do that every day, right? Every day, do, every day, do you wake up and think, okay, I do. I think every day, what's new for me to learn today? What's new for me to learn today? So now we transition to the speaking in different languages. And this represents universal communication of divine truth. We have a lot of universal communication out there. We have Twitter, not such a fan. We have <laughs> Facebook. We have Snapchat. And we have, what else? Um, Instagram. We have ways of communicating universally. But is it in spiritual truth? No, I'd say not so much, right? I mean, I'm not talking about us here. I'm just saying the overall platforms. But this idea of speaking in different languages signifies the realization that the message of love, unity, and spiritual awakening transcends linguistic and cultural barriers. Think about that for a moment. Have you ever seen something done in a different language and your heart has been just opened? Think about the whirling dervishes, right? Touched it right there. And the spiritual impact. Think about something else in your life. You don't even know what that's being said, but you know that it transcends language and cultural barriers. Language is unimportant when it comes to divine knowledge. Somehow we just know something is true. We feel it within our souls and in our bones. I feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my toes. I love that movie, don't you? you who knows what it's from? Exactly. I love every time I hear that or just even think, well, I feel it in my fingers. Oh my goodness, what a great movie. But it resonates with our divine essence. The fact that the disciples and all present, think about that, and all present could understand one another emphasizes the inherent oneness and interconnectedness of all humanity. That puts a new spin on this story, doesn't it? The oh, this is great. I'm just like digging up the old quotes today. This one's from 1936. The still small voice within the heart is the universal tongue that each person hears in their own speech and that all understand. Think about when you go somewhere, you don't even speak the language of those people, but you see a baby. Everybody knows that you're saying, oh, that's an adorable baby. Or you see someone in pain and you go to comfort them. There's no language needed. Just a comforting look. As the Holy Spirit de descends upon the disciples, they go from hiding in fear from the Romans to sharing the message of Jesus to those around to hear it. They become empowered to share the enlightenment they've just experienced and gained. It's almost as if they couldn't stop if they tried. And that is one of our challenges today, isn't it? Figuring out how we may best be examples of the Christ presence and share the message of love 
and oneness in a language that people can hear. It's a challenge for us at times, isn't it? Because we come, we're, we've got all sorts of things happening. How do we find that language? And in a way that impacts our families, our communities, and our world, and moves us from division to unity. The Holy Spirit helped the early disciples conquer their fear of the other those who were not Jewish but who would benefit from Jesus' message. Now remember, at that time, that Jewish authorities reserved their religious practices for Jews only, not Gentiles. Gentiles were not viewed as worthy. But Jesus in his teachings changed all that. His message through Pentecost was, fill yourself with love and be intentional about sharing it with the world. The world, not just a select few. Fill ourselves with love. Ah, and share it with the world. Metaphysically, Pentecost signifies a time of great awakening. A time when ideas that have been meditated upon, prayed upon, and accepted as true become living realities in our lives instead of just mental concepts. Those things that we prayed for at the beginning of the year, the prayer board, all of those things, manifestations of prayer, they become living realities. Pentecost symbolizes an intense infusion of our spiritual powers. Who wants an intense infusion of spiritual powers, right? I'm going to go get the IV, please. Can I have the infusion right now? And it is a melding of the ideas in our conscious, ordinary thinking mind with our superconscious, perfect Christ mind. It's a harmonizing and manifestation of our earthly gifts with our spiritual superpowers. It's as though all of our spiritual learning suddenly combined with an intense and immediate download from the higher realms of consciousness, filling us to overflowing with spiritual energy and such an immersion of the Holy Spirit essence produces rapid growth and unfoldment. Anyone ever had something like this happen in your life where you've just felt, Whoosh, I got an influx right now. It's okay to say yes. I have at times and then it goes away because it probably doesn't stay as intense as that. But it makes a great difference how this spirit is received. If skepticism dominates, there'll be doubt about the download. Is this spam? Don't open it. Delete it right away. For example, those who disbelieved this situation mistook the Holy Spirit for what type of behavior from the apostles? Yes, exactly, drunken behavior. They judged the disciples' actions from a place of their own consciousness and earthly experience. If, on the other hand, an infusion of spirit is received with openness, new confidence, insight, and greater spiritual truths will light the way. I want us to say this together. This is another old one. A person who lives truth is always established in the love and wisdom of spirit and radiates the light and gentleness of the master. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful quote? I just love that. Mm, so beautiful. So to recap metaphysically, Pentecost illustrates how through an infusion of spirit, we can experience a grand awakening, as Sandra loves to say. An awakening which amplifies our awareness of the Holy Spirit within us and supports us in communicating spiritual principles in ways that uplift and inspire others. And who wouldn't want that? Right. So we're going to anchor this with a meditation to awaken 
us and to allow ourselves to be infused right now. Take a few deep breaths, allowing your body to settle into calmness. And if it's comfortable for you, close your eyes. Continue breathing slowly and deeply, becoming more relaxed with every breath. Imagine a warm golden light enveloping your entire being. Visualize this light as the divine presence. The Holy Spirit surrounding and infusing you with love. With each inhale, imagine you are drawing in the essence of Pentecost. Divine wisdom, love and empowerment. A grand awakening within your soul. With each exhale, release any doubts, fears, or limitations that hinder your connection with the divine. Allow yourself to feel a deep sense of unity with all beings. You, beloveds, are part of a greater whole and your unique expression contributes to the tapestry of life. Now imagine your heart opening and expanding, allowing the divine energy to flow freely through you. Feel the warmth and love emanating from your heart, radiating outwards and blessing the world. In this moment of deep connection with the divine, affirm the following two statements silently. I am infused with the Holy Spirit. I am infused with the Holy Spirit. I am infused with the Holy Spirit. I am a channel of love. I am a channel of love. I am a channel of love. I am infused with the Holy Spirit and I am a channel of love.
As you bask in the presence of the divine, allow yourself to feel how this meditation has nourished and supported you. Now gently bring your awareness back to the present, slowly allowing yourself to return. Take a deep breath as you open your eyes, carrying the essence of the grand awakening of Pentecost with you. Happy Grand Awakening Day. So Ron found a sweet song to honor this day by an Episcopalian choir, which seems fitting because after all, we do meet on the grounds of the Church of the Epiphany, an Episcopalian church. And um, I think this is just a really sweet song. So enjoy. A perfect song for Pentecost. And we know, of course, that the Holy Spirit was already within us. And we also know that God is within and also everywhere. So we are inviting that infusion to be greater within us. Yes. And so let us say together, oh, let's breathe into it, first of all. Oh, 
I am a beloved child of God here to be an ambassador of good. What are we here to be? Ambassadors of good. Yes, we are. And so now it's time for our financial sharing. And so and we're so grateful for you because that's what helps us be here. We couldn't be here without you and the financial blessings that we receive because we have rent, we have salaries, we have all of that good stuff. So we are very, very, very grateful. So let us say together, yes, I am a joyful sharer of my good. I remember that as I give, I receive, and that God is my source. Yes, indeed. If you prefer to give electronically, you can do so. Zell, um, here's our Zell, and we also have PayPal, which is not on there, but you can do so on PayPal as well. We prefer Zell. So, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for these blessings. I think there's one more over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Divine Spirit. We are grateful, grateful, grateful. We bless the giver and the receiver and the stewardship of their use. We bless every prayer that has ever been in the prayer box or will ever be in the prayer box. And we thank you, those also who are giving online. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, MGM and Carla. Yes, so we have... Um, Yes, we partner with Matthew's Food, uh, Matthew's Food Bank, and the most needed item, in case you're interested, is diapers for children, or the, the large size, the very large size is what I've heard. So if you're interested, we do partner with them, and people bring them in, and we just um, share those blessings with uh, Matthew's Crossing Food Bank. And we're doing our water drive again for our unhoused neighbors to keep them hydrated. So anytime you see water on sale, feel free to bring it in. We'll take it and Epiphany joins with us in this as well. Oh, this is important. There is a benefit concert, and you can read Saturday, June 17th at 2 p.m. at Gamage, and it is to benefit um, Ukrainian children that are in Ukraine and also that are here. So we invite you to check this out. You can go to Helping Everywhere with Art to find out more. It'd be great if some of us could go as a group. It's on a Saturday, so if anyone's interested, uh, let's get a group going. That would be wonderful. Fun, I think Carla was thinking about making it an outing, our next fun outing together. All right, let us say together. Yes, MGM, wait, one moment. Oh, I thought, I thought you had something to say. Yes, raise your hand and say it. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, remember that video that I shared about re how people raise... Oh, I don't want to raise my hand. And then some people... Like, remember, i got to do that again sometime. That was hilarious because I'm a big raiser. Just because I'm surrendering to spirit and the highest and best. All right, let us say together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. All is well and we are grateful. So, beloveds watching online, have a wonderful week. We hope to see you in person next week.